Next up, we have price discrimination. Right, price discrimination is where you basically charge different prices for the same product or service. So to be able to make this work, you need to identify different groups who are, who are willing to pay different prices. So the young and the over 60s. So they may get cheaper prices in terms of train fares, because we can differentiate the market. Each group of customers must have different price elasticities of demand. So the more elastic demand, you can charge them a higher price. The more elastic demand, obviously, you will charge them a lower price. OK, and thirdly, you must prevent seepage, which means that you stop people from buying the cheaper market and, and selling it off in a more expensive market. Now, in a sense, cars in, in the UK are more expensive than cars in Europe. The reason being is they're often right hand, right hand drive cars. But also, we could buy our cars from Europe and then we would probably buy them more cheaply. OK, there are three types of price discrimination. There's first degree price discrimination, which I'm going to do here. Now, the first degree one, all the consumer surplus is taken. There is no consumer surplus. Remember, the consumer surplus here is where the value that we place in the good is more than, is, is more than we uh, pay for the good. So therefore, there is consumer surplus. Here, the producer is able to extract all of the producer surplus. So clearly, the firm gains. And all the consumer surplus is turned into producer surplus. The firm gains more, more profits. So that is clearly working in favour of the firm. It's bad for the consumer. It's OK for the firm because the firm makes more money. We also have second degree price discrimination or second degree price discrimination. Uh, this is the one that the, the, Econ, the Econ Dow one drew, which is OK. If you have an aeroplane, then you produce where MI equals MC. So that is the price that you charge. However, you also have maybe 50 percent of the aeroplane is free. So you charge people a lower price. So this will be the rise in consumer surplus. So that is a welfare gain. And therefore, some, some consumers will gain through having a lower price. Or the other second degree price discrimination is the more that you buy, the cheaper that you'll be able to buy them at. So that is a diagram for second, also second degree price discrimination. OK, but essentially we are charging different prices to different consumers. Uh, in this case, we can say the consumer gains. In this case, we can say... We can say if the consumer buys a lot of goods, they also gain. And third degree price discrimination is where you're able to separate the markets. You have different elasticities in each market. OK, so you have an inelastic demand. So if you can charge a higher price, a more elastic demand, therefore you charge a, a lower price. The advantages of price discrimination is the producer will make more profits, more likely to have price discrimination. Sorry, so therefore more likely to have dynamic efficiency. They can achieve economies of scale because they're making more and some consumers gain, e.g. the over 60s. However, there is a concept of allocative inefficiency and it may be also anti-competitive because in certain markets you can charge a very low price. So in some areas you're making a lot of profits and then you're keeping other firms out of the market because you're charging a low price in, in some areas. So the first degree is obviously always bad. Second degree, the consumers can, can gain. And third degree, while well, some consumers will gain and some will lose out, obviously. OK, price discrimination. 